What's up, YouTube? This is G-Man coming at you with part 27 of Flat Earth, Flat Wrong Response with Dr. Sun Genis and Dr. Kent Hoven. Okay, so um, we're moving at the at the pace of a snail here. So, um, rushing along. Let's get it. Let's pick up right where we, where, where we left off. Their conclusion is then that no satellite. That's their conclusion, and it has to be their conclusion. Ah, let me zoom, let me rewind this a little bit. Okay, it says to the um, the satellites that can. Okay, what well, I was just talking about in the last video, their conclusion is then that no satellites or photos of the Earth from space are real. Yep, that is our conclusion. Um, you don't have satellites up there. They're not taking pictures of each other. They're not taking pictures of the Earth. And we do have many satellites that are far enough from the Earth that they should be able to take real photographs. And this is the way I used to think it was done. I, I, I was... <coughs> I was just always, whenever I was in the 10th grade, I came up with this, with this, you know, crazy idea of how they did it, okay? So I knew that computers work with zeros and ones. So you've got the image. It consists of zeros and ones. Every single color consists of its own code of zeros and ones, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, one. Zero, zero, zero. It goes on forever. Okay, and every color has its own code, and um, and basically it means off on zero one zero off on zero one. Okay, and that's a digital code. <laughs> so satellites they would go out way out into space. They would they would take a photo, and they would send back each pixel. This is what I thought. They would send back each pixel you know the code for each pixel and you would have the coordinates for each pixel and where it would go on the screen and you could and eventually you'd get all the data back and it would form an image that's what i thought they were doing but they're and and that right there would that right there would make sense to me it made sense to me and that's what i thought for so long <laughs> until I found out just recently in the last year and a half or two man it's moving up on two years now um, just in the year and last year and a half or two that that's not how it works at all they aren't getting any they aren't sending any satellites out there there's no satellites snapping photos all the pictures that they're creating are created in the computer every picture that you can go out and find on the internet of anything in space is all created in a computer. There's no real photographs. All right, let's move on. That's their conclusion, and it has to be their conclusion, because if there is just one photo of a spherical Earth taken from a satellite, the whole movement stops and cannot proceed any further. They know this. We should have thousands of images by now. <coughs> so he's like, if there's just one image that's taken by a satellite, then our whole movement would have to be, would be forced to stop. We've been going at this for 60 years. We've been sending satellites up there for 60, 70 years now. Ever since Sputnik. What is the problem here? We don't have a picture of the, of the real globe Earth. We don't have one. And he's sitting here saying, oh man, all we need is one picture to turn that to, to end the flat earth movement well in the last 70 years we had sure had a chance this whole flat earth movement would be just uh, 
just stopped in its tracks if we had one verifiable picture of the of the globe earth one verifiable picture but we don't have that we don't have that all the satellites in space all came from a fictional source they were science fiction before they were before they were um, reality or they're still fiction actually but they were science fiction before they were clouded or you know before they were before our teachers told us that they were real Arthur C. Clarke wrote about science fiction wrote about satellites 10 years before the satellite was invented he said it and, and it was just a science fiction it was just a piece of science fiction in his book just a piece of technology that wasn't even real it was just a piece of science fiction and he wrote about them 10 years before they came became a reality it's like he wrote about them and then 10 years later it was predictive programming it was predictive programming and uh, so, so so the satellites really aren't real they just aren't they aren't real All right, let's move on. There has to be an all-or-nothing game with them. NASA is either all correct or it's all wrong and there's no in-between. <coughs> yeah, that's right. Treat NASA the way that you would treat the Bible. If there's one thing that's wrong with the Bible, one truth in the Bible that is proven to be untrue, then the whole Bible can be thrown out the window. You can throw the whole Bible out the window just because you find one thing wrong with it. Any pastor will tell you that. Any pastor. If you find one thing wrong with the Bible, you can throw it out the window. Now, the thing that they'll do is they will come up with some contrived uh, explanation for this flat earth, like this flat earth thing. The Bible has always taught that the earth was flat, starting with the firmament on day two. Okay? You create the earth on day one, and then you create the firmament on day two. You place the sun, moon, and stars inside the firmament. All inside the firmament. Okay? Got the earth down here, the firmament. Sun, moon, and stars all inside the firmament. Birds flying in the firmament below the sun, moon, and stars. you got the clouds floating around and stuff. Weather patterns. You know, what else? Or whatever else. Okay? And um, it, the, the, the Bible just in the first chapter it describes the snow globe. How do people not see this? Alright, let's go. I didn't see it. I, because of my preconceived bias of the globe. I, whenever I read God created the earth you know, it never says that God shaped the earth. It never says that God formed the earth into a globe. I knew this from a long time ago. The Bible always said <coughs> from the very beginning that God created the heavens and the earth. And that didn't mean it was a globe. It doesn't mean it was a globe. At what point in the six day creation does God say that God took the earth and made it into a ball. It doesn't say that anywhere. So, you got the heavens above and you got the earth below. You just got the heavens and the earth in verse 1. The earth is flat. All right, let's let's pick up. One instance about NASA, when they let's say you send a satellite about 500 miles or a thousand miles above the Earth, and you have it rotate around the Earth and take pictures of the Earth as it's as it's rotating around, orbiting, not well, rotating. What's going to happen? Oh, by the way, the reason they have to have it close, like 500 or a thousand miles, is they want to see detail in the landscape because they're going to be making maps. 
But if you do that, then you're going to suffer with a very narrow FOV. So what? We give the NASA billions of dollars every year. Send up a satellite, 5,000 miles. Send up a satellite, 10,000 miles. Send up a satellite, 15,000 miles. Okay? And, the, and then we can get the Earth at all these different distances. Okay? Until you get, until you get a satellite that's a million miles out. We get all these different distances of pictures of the Earth. And then you can really zoom in. We really have a real... Zo a, a real earth a real images of the earth that we can zoom in on and have it continuously taking pictures you know giving us updated pictures continuously oh uh, okay it's uh 10 53 okay i'm gonna go ahead and call it a video and g-man out